Cradle Mountain National Park is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Area covering one quarter of Tasmania. The protected flora and fauna of Cradle Mountain give visitors the opportunity to see many animal species up close. Like the wallaby, the wombat is a herbivorous marsupial that is often seen in Tasmania. Despite its friendly appearance, one shouldn't forget the power of its jaws, capable of tackling the bark and roots of trees that it feeds on. This animal, strong enough to knock over a man, is, however, the prey of a smaller carnivorous marsupial, the Tasmanian Devil. As it is essentially nocturnal, it's difficult to spot in the wild. The public can learn more about its way of life from Nicole, who devotes her energies to protecting the little animal. She knows each of her 31 charges and wants to correct people's preconceptions about them. This is Ebony, and she's coming into her third year. So for a devil, she'd be halfway through her life by now. And uh, it's in her personality to be extremely tolerant. But um, a lot of people have this idea that devils are a terribly aggressive, ferocious species. But in fact, they're not. They're quite shy and um, very wary of human beings. It's just that they communicate by vocalising a lot and it's very noisy. So human beings often equate that with aggressive behaviour, but uh, it's just communication for these guys. Now hop off now. Here you go. Good. <laughs> the devil is threatened with extinction from a devastating disease. Tasmanian devil facial tumour disease prevents them from feeding normally and animals with this terrible disease die of malnutrition. Nearly 60% of wild devils have disappeared over the space of just 12 years. The centre where Nicole works is dedicated to the protection and captive breeding of devils with the aim of maintaining a healthy population base. Only initiatives of this type carried out across the country offer any hope that this most emblematic of Tasmanian species can escape its sorry fate. It's a bit like us sitting down to a 15 kilo steak. Anyone sitting? It's a lot of meat. Oh, oh, yeah. There is a documented case of a couple of devils coming across a dead cow in a paddock, folks. They eat their way through the bum end because it's nice and soft. What can they do that they've gorged? But they can't digest it all, so they fall asleep inside the cow. <laughs> Use it as a den for about a week. <coughs> and then you can just wake up and keep going. It's, it's actually the gingerbread house for devils. <laughs> it's making you hungry, is it? <laughs> Cradle Mountain National Park is the oldest and most popular in Tasmania. Visitors come here for the wild and yet accessible environment. The pure water of the Cradle Mountain lakes is an abundant source of drinking water for walkers. All fresh water in the west of Tasmania is the colour of black tea 
tannins from peat and vegetation give the water its dark colour and characteristic taste. Many marked tracks wind between the lakes and allow people to explore without impacting on the fragile soil that is saturated with rainwater. This easy access allows people to come here for short day treks and to see the landscape dominated by the mountain which gives its name to the national park. Dragonflies everywhere. Mark Davis and Leif Bradshaw are natives of Tasmania. They left Cradle Mountain a few days ago and are on the Overland Track, the most famous walking track in Tasmania. They've known each other for many years, but it's the first time that Leif has joined Mark Davis on the track. All right, one at a time, Leifie, one at a time. The Overland Track attracts 200,000 walkers every year from around the world. The success of this destination has allowed investment in infrastructure to protect fragile riverbanks and damp, moss-covered areas. The Australian National Park Service seems to have succeeded here in combining the conservation of a protected area and mass tourism. A friend of his father, with whom he built the walkways on the track, Mark Newleaf as a teenager. Being an experienced walker and knowing the region very well, he leads him off the track to show him a place he particularly loves. But we'll need to find a place that's um, not too exposed because the lake's really open to wind. Yeah. So if we found something just like this, it shelters like, us. Yeah, that's be perfect. Just yeah, like just ourselves in between some rocks or shrubs or something. Yeah. Once we're up on the plateau, then it's there's not oh, as many no. opportunities as finding things like that. But uh, we'll have to probably walk off the side of the plateau to find a camp. Yeah. Sounds like a plan, Stan. Into the pencil pines. Oh yeah. Into oh, Jurassic Park. I that big ridge over there so bad. Yeah. It's pretty striking. So how far is the lake away? Oh, the lake's probably a 15-minute walk. Yeah. We're basically uh, a day walk off the southern, the southern end of the, um, the, the famous Tasmanian overland track. Um, but we've come up here specifically to to get off the beaten trail and to and, and to enjoy the the more remote parts of the of the landscape. Where we are now is we're sitting in a place called the Labyrinth, and it's called the Labyrinth because we're sitting amongst a dotted series of uh, alpine lakes and ancient pencil pine forest. I personally love this place because it's uh, you know, so, so incredibly ancient. I can sit here and, and picture and visualise uh, you know, the Jurassic period and dinosaurs running <laughs> through the landscape.
In this ageless landscape, Mark offers Leaf the chance to experience a few days in the heart of this exceptional environment. They decide to camp for the night by Lake Elisa, from where they'll be able to enjoy the first glimmers of daylight. So, um, yeah, we'll go the same thing again. Then I'll go inside. Yeah, there's barely ever anyone you know ever comes to these these places that are off the beaten trail most people just walk through like a highway so it's a it's a retreat for me it's a it's a get, it's a get back to my to my mm. senses and uh, more than anything else for me personally it's a you know these places are, are a resource for well-being and happiness just walking in uh, and then walking out the other side there's nothing quite like it um, automatically I feel like a new person yeah Mm. No, likewise. Like, I think it's just so much space to breathe and think. That's got it. It's good. And uh, there's nothing better than getting into a place like this and watching the natural cycles of things um, to bring us back to a sense of how fragile we are and our interrelationship with the, the very places that support us. So basically, we're sitting up in the highlands of Tasmania. Um, so we're, we're blessed with a, an island that's incredibly diverse relative to size, where the, cent uh, the central plateau is filled with strikingly beautiful mountain ranges, the likes of what we're seeing behind us and, and all around us. Um, and in contrast to the, to the pristine beaches um, of, of the east coast and the giant forests of the west coast and southern Tasmania, um, yeah, we literally, literally um, live in a, in, a, in a virtual paradise. And I think it takes really getting out into it to understand and to appreciate um, you know, where it is that we live. The full depth of our paradise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To see all the different sides of it. Yeah, this is just the right side of the hill. What fun. Oh, look at the first scene. There's a pool there. <laughs> <laughs> 